All right, class, uh, I have dried off my uh, dog and the, uh, the background and everything, and um, uh, I'm getting ready to put in uh, all the blacks. And I wanted to remind you guys, uh, one of the darkest, best blacks that you can make is a combination of all of the, uh, the darkest red, which is going to be your uh, alizarin crimson, and then your darkest brown, which is going to be sepia. If you don't have that, you can use the uh, dark brown in our set. Uh, it is uh, uh, dark umber. So, oh my goodness. You're going to tell me you're not coming out of there. Oh my goodness. It's starting to dry up. Um, the reason I got this little plate, instead of just using these over in my uh, regular set, is... Um, Whenever you make a black, I always like to use kind of fresh paint um, just because it's it stays um, the black. Whenever I use brown over here and I have to add water to get it to, um, to activate, then that's already um, um, diluting the color. So what I'm using here is uh, indigo, and that's your darkest blue. If you have uh, ultramarine deep, that works really well. If you have a, a dark uh, Prussian or whatever, that works uh, well uh, also. And um, uh, But you want to use as little uh, water as possible. Now this semi-dried out... Uh, 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 sepia this really 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 dark brown Isn't that beautiful and we may end up using some of that uh, especially on his you know like in between his legs and some of the anyway some of the areas when we get to it uh, we're going to mix equal parts uh, but you need quite a bit of this uh, color mixed up he is a black dog after all so we're going to put in a, uh, a lot of color we're going to pick up a little bit of uh, each color. Now you'll see this turns to a nice reddish brown, kind of a brick deep uh, reddish brown. And then to combat that, we're going to pick up a little bit of the blue. And look at that deep, deep, deep black color that we get. Uh, this is one of my favorite ways to make black. And uh, it just has a richness to it that you just don't get from, like, a tube of black. A tube of black is not bad, and we even use those in class, right? So, um, you know, there's not a, a problem with that. But to get this really rich, uh, thick uh, black, I use, the, uh, I use these three colors. I use the darkest brown I can get. I use the darkest blue I can get. And I use the darkest uh, red that I can get. You mix all of those uh, colors together, then you're going to um, uh, get this really rich black. Now, before I go to the water, all this has got to go out of the brush. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to blacken your water, and you're not going to be able to wet any area without it being gray. And you've got some color on here already, so we're just taking off as much of the color as we can before we clean out uh, our uh, brush. And notice I wasn't scrubbing the brush so that it stays into this nice point and everything. Okay, good. <laughs> and um, I do have a little bit of green in this water, and now I have a little bit of black, but I have uh, two waters, as y'all can see. One for cleaning out and one for uh, fresh water. So anything I wanna wet, I go to the fresh water. So clean it at, cleaning it out, and you're going to be able to get to that um, uh, clean brush uh, ready to go, you know, just a, just a whole lot easier than, than uh, uh, if you just went straight to the water. It's going to take you forever to get your brush clean. Okay, uh, when I put this gray in uh, going across the top of his head, it should have been following this line, and this is actually a black shadow. So I'm going to go over that area with black, but first I wanted to put in a little bit of our gray. 
which I'm not sure I still have because I used it up in the green background. Yeah, let's just try that. And uh, this is going to be going down. Yeah, that's it. Uh, going down the ear. Uh, it's like it's kind of folding on itself a little bit. So uh, we want to make sure that we get that. So I'm going to put this uh, black over here. And we're going to start in uh, with, uh, you know what, let's just start in with our, our details. So we're going to use a smaller brush. Uh, you can get as small of one as you want, um, especially for doing the eyes and, and whatnot. You know, you can get a really, a really small brush. I thought I had like a, I like the ones when I'm doing small work to have a little bit longer hairs. Uh, do you see where the, the barrel, see how much longer these hairs are? Um, and I could use that, but um, just whatever smaller brush you happen to have. Um, I'm going to try this one, and if it doesn't work, I'll go to this one. Because um, this one may be a little bit, a little bit large. It is a four. So I'm going to go down to this one, which is a three aught. <laughs> so there seems to be a little something on the barrel. I want to make sure that's not watercolor. It's probably ink, so that's fine. Uh, once ink dries, it's it's there. So I'm going to um, pick up some of this fresh black that I made, and as you put it on here, you can you can see. Oh, well, that's a little blue. Well, then you go back and add a little brown. If it's a little red, then you would go back and add a little blue. You know, as you're uh, working on the uh, different parts, and you're going to want the absolute black. Now, see that does look a little bit blue, so I'm not pick up a little bit more brown. But being a Rottweiler, for it to be a little bit blue, that's okay. Super black. I uh, like to paint dogs with their black being just a, I mean a black dog with their black being just a touch. Um, uh, blue anyway. And we're going to add in these um, dark blacks. There's a little bit blacker right down the center between his um, the jowl parts of his face. And then up above the uh, the nose. This is very black coming over into this space. So we kind of want it to look like little hairs going in the different directions. So overlap with the brown. Don't leave white um, in there. And you can always go in and, you know, paint your darks and then come back with the absolute blacks uh, just to get rid of the white of the paper. There is nothing wrong with that. Um, I usually kind of tend to do that, but this rounder and then it gets grayer as it gets up towards this gray but it starts off really black right here and goes in all the directions And you're just going to keep building this up as you go around, building up your blacks. But you do want each stroke to go in the direction of the fur, so following that, um, reference photo is going to be super important for you. And right here along this uh, nose, there's not a harsh 
a harsh line right here. We're going to go back in and soften that in uh, after we finish doing all of our blacks. at work. Um, you hear a lot of that over here by my house. Short, short. The hairs on the face are really short, so don't uh, don't make long strokes. You can actually kind of turn down and out. And as you start getting more gray, that just means your your uh, paint is thinning out on your um, on your brush. So some of these little whites uh, that you see, um, I kind of leave uh, just so that. I can come back later and do a little bit of a wash of color, a light gray over that. And, uh, and it makes it look like little highlights. I like to do that. So, his hair just goes in all kinds of directions, doesn't it? Anytime you go over an area, just make sure you're going in the right direction because uh, those little strokes, they actually do show up. Um, uh, you think I'm painting black on top of black, it will still show up. Um, so you want to make sure that, that this comes around here. Okay. <clears throat> Whenever I turn my board, I always turn my um, my picture as well so that I can see what's going on. You don't want to work with a picture this way and your board turns sideways because then you can easily uh, make that mistake of, um, of uh, not getting the direction of the fur right or getting... Uh, The strokes and the you know you think you're you're on this dark part but you're actually on the lighter part you know or something so this is this is his face this is in the background so this is going to be a lighter color so I'm going to add a little bit of water to this gray um, and this is uh, I guess part of his stomach or his other paw in the, uh, not the front paw, but the other paw. And so I'm gonna make it lighter. But I'm also gonna make it kind of fuzzy going into the background. I don't wanna see all the little hairs actually. The hairs that I wanna see are the ones that are in front. The brown hairs. So I'm just gonna kind of fill in that area of gray. And then uh, from underneath the ear to the, um, uh, to the face is going to be, this area is going to be like your black, black. So go back to the thicker black um, in order to do that. And I'm going to make some strokes uh, come backwards. So it looks like those uh, brown hairs are going over the black. 
You just don't want those to look like perfectly spaced apart. Uh, like you don't want them to look like this. You know what I'm saying? You want them to be very random and very uh, uh, jig jagged on the ends and stuff like that. So make sure that you're not making uh, the strokes that come into the brown area uh, all the same length nor are they the same uh, distance apart. I'm just kind of filling in that blackish area before the gray of the ear. And it's very dark up underneath here. And it is a little straighter. Um, the hair of the ear would be coming in this direction. And then the face goes out. So I'm gonna start at that line and kind of come in. And then just fill in. And like I said, if you wanted to, um, wanted to, uh, you know, not paint every one of these hairs in this particular style. I just wanted to show y'all something different. Uh, you can just paint them all in, you know, a medium brown, a medium gray, uh, and then paint the absolute blacks on top, and uh, that would be fine as well. But is the fuzzy part the black and right in here it's a little bit lighter so I'm leaving that and I'm just going to touch the water uh, to my brush you don't want it drippy right um, you just want it to be um, oh, you still have that black in there but you just want it to be a little bit lighter gray and that's going to go right in here so that you can see uh, what's black and what's shiny um, the shine comes uh, next to that um, brown part uh, of his face. And uh, so I'm going to get some of that watered down version and uh, pull out some of those grays going around that spot into this black over here. And then it gets underneath, it gets really black. So what I can tell you guys, the best thing I can tell you, follow the pattern that you see on there. So what I'm saying is this little part is grayer and then it's blacker uh, underneath, underneath that spot, okay? So you're just following the pattern that you see. Everything has got a pattern, everything. And uh, so you're gonna want to learn to follow those patterns and uh, see what's really there. And you'll be able to paint or draw or do whatever, anything. <clears throat> This definitely uh, curves to the right, goes straight, and curves to the left. So just kind of pick a, you uh, a middle spot of some verticals, and then go to the right, and then go to the left. And if your hand, you have a hard time, you know, bending your hand and stuff like that, if there's any reason you can't turn it over and then just draw them down. Uh, you know, whatever feels most uh, comfortable to you, then that's what you should do, okay? Okay. Putting it 
a few on top of that brown area because there are a few longer blacks that show up in that uh, in that area so we're just going to put a few in there and uh, from the top down I'm just going to water this a little bit it's grayer definitely grayer so I don't want it absolutely black put a few lines going down cover up that white spot okay Kind of dry brushing a little bit of the grays. And then right across here, uh, across the head, it gets lighter again. So um, that's why I was doing some lighter ones. But right in between the uh, eyes and up above it a little bit is, um, in between these spots, it is definitely black. So I had my gray in there, but it wasn't up high enough. So we can actually go back and put that in if you want. I'm just gonna water down some of this black and um, uh, instead of dry brushing, just go ahead and add those lighter grays uh, as we're working the black. I touched the black so some of the streaks got darker. So we don't want that to happen and uh, get those grays in. His little hair. And then you can throw some of these absolute blacks over the top. They kind of blend in uh, as you're going. And then it blends into this gray down here. So we're gonna go in the opposite direction. Grays kind of go in between the eyes, like right in between, so we're right on track with those. And then they start getting black as it gets over to this side. Get a water spot. It's okay. When you use just the very, very tip end, you can definitely hear um, <laughs> the strokes on the paper, especially when it starts to get a little dry, the paint on the brush. Starts getting a little drier. Any of these that uh, you know come down too far, or get too dark, too too uh, close, or whatever, you can always lift those out as well. And uh, I 
I don't think the gray is actually dark enough. So I'm going to uh, fling some of the darks uh, into that area. Kind of still make it gray, but not as light. Once you get dark next to something, you can always tell, ooh, I need to make this lighter, or I need to make that darker, or, you know. Uh, it helps to get in the, the background and everything in order to see that as too watery. Always make sure when you go to the water that you just put the brush tip into the water. If you uh, clean out your brush, uh, don't just tap the brush like this because see the water that's on the barrel here? You need all of that gone or it'll just run down the barrel and flood your place and you'll end up with uh, you know, uh, um, a messed up uh, section of color. Stay up on tip to do these fine little hairs. On his nose. I like to do some going up and then some going down just to, you know, so you don't end up with a harsh line somewhere. And you surely don't want them all to start and stop at the same place because they don't. Watch where your hand sets too as you're uh, working around. You don't want to put it in anything that's wet and then create a stamp with your hand, which we've all kind of done, but. Um, this is definitely super black. Right next to that brown. There are a few uh, long hairs going in this direction. I'm just gonna make that one go longer. Of course, if I had a little paint on the brush, it would have done. And then bring some back in from the other side. gray up above the eye and then black this is just a uh, building up and building up and building up. And I like the little bits of white sometimes that show through to um, to make it look like the hair is sparkly and stuff like that. If that bothers you, just go back in and touch them up. Uh, I don't mind it, especially right in here, but like in this brown and stuff, I might just leave it. It's uh, like a gold hair or a little white hair, because they do have those. <clears throat> Whoops, staying up on point. Cleaning off all that water. Look at that water on the on the barrel. So you don't want that to run down. backwards. 
and we're just building up all of our layers on our dog. Now, even in these areas and stuff like that, you might want to add a few um, little uh, roughed up places. And sometimes I'll take even my small brush like this, kind of uh, splay it out a little bit to where it's um, it kind of spreads uh, along this way. It's got a little bit too much water in it to do that. There we go. And uh, just create a little bit of uh, those tiny little hairs. They're almost going to be gray. But you're just trying to not have a harsh line of stopping one color and starting another color. You can also do that by backing up like this so that you kind of have that little bit of a, a grayed color and not a harsh line. So I wanted to show you all how that works. There's multiple ways, of course, to do that uh, technique, but this is one I haven't shown you guys, so I wanted to show you how to blend these different colors uh, together. All right. This may just be getting a little bit uh, boring at this part. Now, I'm having to add water to reactivate this color. So I'm not going to have as dark a black as I had before. So I'm going to go back, get me some, um, I'm actually not going to use a CDB brush to do that with. I don't think I need that biggest one, but either. So I'm just uh, putting a little bit of water on this. Uh, he's pretty dried out, this sepia the darkest brown that you can have that I just like to and then I can just move that lump over come over here and pick up some of this uh, blue add that to it and come over and pick up some of the red add that to it and then you can test it and see if it's um, the same uh, color or if it needs to be um, or if it needs to be uh, darkened down a little bit. Now, the very top of his head right here is a lighter gray, but then right underneath it is a little bit of um, uh, black coming down to this ear. Little curly hairs coming off of the top there. So you want those to go in the direction that you see them. Uh, this is the light part, so that's going to be dark through here. And it's definitely dark over here. I'm just using up all this um, black in this brush where I've mixed it. It's kind of a big brush, but it'll work. Goes back and then out, back, and then out, and then in between this uh, gray part, there is the black hair as well, kind of comes out and down. And this is really too light of a gray uh, here, so we can just, uh, do our blending technique there for sure. Um, you want little short strokes actually on this ear. A little bit shorter hair. A little bit of dark coming from both sides. Um, and it's going to, now that we've got this black next to it, you can really tell that almost looks white. So you definitely want to uh, darken that. It's really dark put a second coat right here. Once this dries, it may not show up, but this is the shadow of the ear on the face. 
and it's definitely darker there. Okay, so I pretty much used most of the black in this brush, but um, I'm going to dip it in the water uh, and then get most of it off. Um, I don't want to have it, you know, black, but I'm going to use the same brush and um, fill in this area here like hair uh, so it's a little lighter in color a little lighter gray hopefully you can see that and then out here on the tip end it is as well and I might splay the brushes there, br bristles there as well so that you can get um, just this little little bit of a fuzzy texture you know we're gonna paint his body right there so I don't know if this is wasted motion but we'll see we're gonna splay up this hair picking up some of this dark creating our grays so he looks fuzzy on the outside take your time guys do this well um, you want to uh, you want to make sure you get uh, everything looking the way you want it to. I don't want you to not be happy with the outcome of your pieces from the class. And I'm here, guys. Email me. Talk to me. Tell me, I'm struggling with this, or how did you do that again? You know, whatever I need to do. I don't know if y'all are watching any of the other videos and whatnot, but I was showing one guy how to do um, a coil spring on for another project he was working on. <laughs> so I just made it part of the drawing class. Um, going to the clean water to make sure I got all the gray uh, gone uh, out of this brush before I store it and go back to my little one. I don't know. I actually kind of liked that brush and it splayed really well. So I might just go ahead and keep it because I'm going to be doing these larger areas. Now his back, what is behind this head is uh, definitely a lighter gray. And because I want those little hairs to kind of show up over this gray area, I'm going to want to put that in first. That's what I was talking about when I said this may not show up over here. So I'm going to paint the background. You know how we always talk about working from the background forward? Well, this is the background of the dog itself. So I'm going to water down some of the uh, black. Um, he is still black, but it's definitely uh, a grayer tone back here. And if you wanted to, you could add a touch more of the brown to that color so it looks a little bit different than the black in the head. And um, that's going to make his body look even uh, better. So we're going to come up here in between these little hairs and add this uh, little bit. Well, I got too much water. It got really lighter. <laughs> okay. Mm, fling it down into those little hairs. We can always paint those little hairs right back on top. I touch up the background right there. It's no big deal. And then uh, coming off of this ear, he has uh, like a little spot that's going to be brown. Then there's like a little um, V section uh, right here. And then there's a little bit of black along the bottom, which is probably a shadow, but you know, it's so out of focus you can't really tell. So we're going to add those colors in 
bring this uh, black down to this line. I'm trying to get it in before that line dries and becomes a hard line. And uh, it's not a real uh, model. Whoops. Well, look at that. I just splattered black. Um, no, it's just water. Yay. Um, so I'm just going to kind of soften that color into the color that's already there. And then I'm going to go back to my browns that I had made. Oh, well. There's no brown left. We're going to make some more. And it's definitely darker. Um, this brown back here is definitely a little redder than what you see in the face too. And it's definitely darker because it's, you know, it's kind of in shadow in the back. So we're going to start with our uh, golden yellow, which is... Um, Cad yellow D, and we're going to mix in our our uh, umber. Until we get us a nice uh, kind of a brownish color. Somewhere I touched a little green. Oh, there's a little bit right there. Well, let's get a little more brown. And then to make it a little more sienna, we're going to go with our cad, because that's our orangey or red. And to make our uh, kind of sienna color. And we're going to fill in this uh, area back here with that. And then we're going to blend those. Um, together. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the, going back to the black, um, I want it kind of uh, darker. So I'm going to pick up some of this darker color with hardly any water at all on my brush. Whoops. And uh, we're going to touch that into the brown area. And uh, I'm going to blend it with another brush. And just kind of let that bleed together, kind of uh, nondescript lines. You don't want any, see how the harsh line is right here? We don't want that. We want this to be very uh, nondescript. So we're going to put a little bit of the gray. Sorry, it shouldn't be that black. And blend that in with our brown that we just put in. Kind of gives us a... Uh, Kind of lets that black bleed up into that brown a little bit. Lets that brown bleed down into the into the black and everything. So it just kind of uh, marries that together a little bit. These uh, the black between it and the ear and stuff. You can just uh, gray that up a little bit more and uh, we'll come back and put the absolute blackest lines on the outside of the ears and stuff uh, or we could uh, erase away a little bit of fuzzy uh, kind of a, a lifting off method so that it, it's actually a little lighter if you look at the picture you'll see that it's actually a little bit lighter so blur those lines a little bit more before they get dried out. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I keep wanting to move the picture. It's stuck out. <gasps> All right, guys. We are well over halfway. And uh, I hope you're still enjoying doing our puppy. And um, I'm going to jump in with making this absolute black got a little bit of red a little bit of blue 
I love it a lot of blue. Get this brown over here and then melt some of that in there. Much better. I don't know if y'all can see that, but when you start making it, you will see that it is, um, if it's kind of purpley black, that means there's too much red and blue. You need to add more brown. If it's uh, too blue, uh, you can add the red and brown. If it's too brown, then you can add the red and blue. You know what I'm saying? You can just, until you get this nice black, rich uh, black color, you know, just don't stop until you get uh, all of that done. Okay, I am going to uh, kind of splay my brush again. And um, there's a lot of paint up mixed in there because I just made a bunch of paint. And uh, it's going to get all over my hands, but it is what it is. Uh, underneath this uh, paw here, it is um, black, uh, where it kind of comes down into the, the background. And it's going to be hairy. And it comes down around where that arm is up on top. So you can make a few of them go up into the into the arm, but we're probably going to bring the the black brown over the top of the black. This right here is an actual shadow of the dog, so that's going to be blurry. And then all along this edge, you're going to want to uh, make him look fuzzy, and that hair goes uh, in the different directions, and it actually kind of starts turning down right there. Let's get a little bit more. <laughs> I tried to spray, spray the bristles by uh, rolling it on the, the wet paint. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So we're just going to kind of bring some of them downward like this. These go out. and then turn down. You do want to try to get rid of the white of the paper, but this um, gray part right here it is part of his ear. All right, got to get all that out of the uh, just trying to get it in the tip end and um, so I can have a little bit more control. This is actually his ear right here. I should put some tape on the bottom of this plate so it doesn't spin around on me. Um, and see where I have this gray? Look how light it dried. Uh, that's definitely going to have to go a lot darker. So this is the uh, hair from the face. Goes in two different directions. Right next to this brown, it is very dark goes right up close to this eye but not all the way and then it goes up into that gray area so this has got to be grayer that gray is the same color but you now that I've got the black next to it it's hard to tell so You still want to go in the direction of the fur and then we're just going to kind of splay it out a little bit over the uh, background line. So I'm going to splay the bristles a little bit. Go in that direction. It's a little bit grayer right through here. So I'm not going to put absolute black.
and where I've dry brushed I can always come back in and do a little bit of uh, washes. So this is the gray area here around this part of the ear. There's absolute black right next to it. So we're going to blacken that in. And this is absolute black up here as well. Let's get some more. I really don't want to wet the brush too much. I just want to pick up this wet paint. Once the paint starts to get a little tacky, you can't help but have to wet your brush. So, uh, top of his head. This is definitely black. Little curlies. Into this black. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wet the brush. It's definitely dry brushing, but we can always make more paint if we need to. I'm just barely adding any water just to make it release from the plate because um, it still looks pretty dark. I hope I didn't move that out of the camera view. Um, this is um, this is where we are right here on the black parts of the the dog's head, and this is the highlight going down the ear and um, black area around the eye. This is definitely black. Coming up around this brown spot. We get rid of those little whites and uh, we can always come back like we softened over here. We can always come back and soften inside the little spots and stuff. And it's definitely darker coming around this little spot into his nose and down into here. If you want to go back to your little brush like you did on this side, that's fine. Uh, the hair, actually, though, is starting to go uh, downhill and it curves this way. So we want to uh, kind of curve our strokes. You do whatever is required to follow the direction of the fur. And then it comes down. Uh, you don't want a harsh line, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of break it up a little bit. You can uh, spray your bristles if you need to. And uh, that way they come out uh, different angles and different directions. And then it's grayer right there. There is a little bit of gray uh, underneath the eye. Then it goes black right to this little part. And then that's just kind of splayed out as well. Just softening that area. As the black runs out of my brush, it kind of is a nice soft um, gray. So it's perfect for blending over this brown uh, area here. And um, this comes down around that way. This comes down and comes out right in here a little bit. So uh, that's this little brown part coming through there, or it's a blacker. I'm doing it gray. And uh, we're going to wet that a little bit, thinning out the color. And 
and uh, splaying our bristles. And we're going to do the grays in between. So these are the uh, gray hairs. It's not actually as black. Actually going to pull some of them back the other way just so it doesn't create any harsh lines within the black area we're just trying to make that shine a little bit on his ear and then the tip ends are absolutely black uh, coming down over here The um, uh, large part up above the uh, head is a uh, kind of highlighted gray. So we're just going to uh, thin out the black. You know, I just talked about filling in those background parts and then I did half the dog and not the other half. So we are going to have to go in. Before we can, these little lines right here will even show up. We need to uh, we need to go ahead and do that uh, part. Obviously the lighter side of the dog. 